Very good Saturday afternoon to everybody. In two and a half days, we had a tropical depression become a major Category 4 hurricane before making landfall in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. That was Helene. It is now raining itself out over the interior eastern United States, but it has left its mark, and they would not be surprised if this system eventually becomes retired. All big nasty uh, catastrophic hurricanes of the past uh, eventually got discontinued and it would not surprise me if Helene joins the club unfortunately as uh, the pieces left behind will be left for a very long time to come. This was the scene by the way in um, one part of the mountains of North Carolina was seen almost roofs um, inundated by uh, by floodwaters here. This was a pretty outstanding scene, to be honest with you. And uh, something more resembling Houston or New Orleans after either Katrina or Harvey uh, is the words that uh, John Erdman of the Weather Channel said with regard to this image here captured in, uh, in just to the east of Asheville, North Carolina. So, as of the time of recording, we do have a, a fairly busy Atlantic at the moment. It is arguably the busiest so far this season. We've got the remnants of Helene, and by the time you're watching this, Helene is probably not even post-tropical. It'll probably have dissipated completely, I would imagine, anyway. We've also got Hurricane Isaac that uh, is relatively far to the north here, as you can see, due west of the Azores, really but almost between Bermuda and the Azores here. We've got the Tropical Storm Joyce and we also have Disturbance uh, number two here with a 0% chance over the next 40 hours of development here. Looking at the next seven days according to, according to NHC, you can see here that we do have a um, uh, Hurricane Isaac expected to uh, remain a hurricane through the course of today and then probably disappear as it moves into colder waters. We have got uh, Joyce that is uh, expected to uh, drift west northwestwards and then dissipate. And it looks as if we've got uh, a 30% chance on disturbance to developing over the next seven days or so. We've also got an area of interest in here, anywhere from the southern Caribbean, extending up into the southern Gulf of Mexico. This region, according to NHC, has a 30% chance of development over the next seven days. So let's hone in on Isaac, first of all. We'll look at the uh, IR imagery in just a second, but you can see the forecast track has it still as a hurricane up until Tuesday, uh, no, sorry, Sunday afternoon. Then it becomes a storm and then it dissipates uh, to the west of, uh, well, over the open waters of the North Atlantic. I was going to say to the west of the UK, but they, that is well to the west of the UK. Um, and essentially what it's going to do is it's going to uh, run into more hostile conditions within the atmosphere and colder and colder water temperatures. Looking at the uh, tropical storm Joyce as we progress through the next several days and the system really goes nowhere. It dissipates over the open main development region of the Atlantic. No real surprise that we have seen this uptick in activity. It was highlighted here in the channel for quite some time that the Magellan Oscillation that is the active phase anyway, would uh, propagate eastwards out of the Pacific into the Atlantic Basin, leaving behind a lot of large scale sinking over the Pacific. As you can see here in this GFS chart, uh, the uh, orangey colours represent sinking, the greens represent rising, or, and you can see quite widely that rising or is present over the, uh, the Atlantic Basin, the Americas, and so on and so forth. As we play through, the sequence of the GFS ensemble, you can see that eventually what happens is the uh, the sinking uh, returns back to the Americas and back into the Atlantic Basin, and we actually start to see a more weakened form uh, of a phase anywhere from really one, two, to three, four, and five of the MGO here. So that would uh, mean that we would have the enhanced convection, uh, you know, moving east through the Indian Ocean and into the maritime continent here, sinking motion over the Americas and over the Atlantic Basin here. So it becomes less favourable as we move towards the, you know, the end of week one, end of week two of October. But uh, there's not a huge amount of imminent threat, really. This is a uh, Hurricane Isaac. You can see here off the imagery 
that we do have a lot of uh, southwesterly winds blowing at the moment here, hence why we've got a lot of the convection getting blown to the northeast here. We've got a lot of convection off to the east of the of, of uh, Isaac as well. We do have uh, northwesterly winds, if you notice here, at the very edge of this, uh, of this uh, image here, you can see the clouds getting blown in from a northwesterly direction and then uh, generally over and around Isaac itself, we've got southwesterly winds continuing to kind of move this system in a northeasterly direction here. It's actually moving kind of generally in an east direction, if you notice, but a lot of its convection getting blown off the central dense overcast is getting lifted to the northeast here. So we've got a little bit of a northwesterly, westerly, and southwesterly shear here. It will maintain its strength over the next day, 24, 36 hours or so, but it looks as if it will eventually run into increasingly hostile conditions as well as colder sea surface temperatures beneath. Looking at Tropical Storm Joyce, not a whole lot to speak about. It looks as if we are seeing an area of deeper convection here blowing up uh, on the southern side of the uh, CDO. Generally, uh, we do have some gravity waves uh, emitting from the central dense overcast, so uh, it looks as if it's, it's trying to get its act together anyway. It looks as if it's in relatively low shear. We do have some conflicting directions of convection here, which would indicate some change in wind uh, direction and speed with height, which would obviously be an, an impeding aspect to this. But it's generally not going to really go anywhere. It's going to just dissipate and fall apart over the Atlantic and the central Atlantic at that um, looking elsewhere, looking at the models here, this is the GFS Ensemble, and you can see that we do have a uh, Isaac over the open North Atlantic. Is this the right chart? Yes, it is. Uh, we had, uh, looking back uh, over the past few days, this is Helene moving into the northwest of Florida here. We've got the once Category 3 Hurricane John that moved ashore on the west coast of Mexico here. So certainly has been a, a fairly active spell. We obviously did see the development of the Central American gyre. Uh, that is arguably what uh, allowed Helene to spin off that uh, vortex, become its own entity. It was slow to uh, get itself uh, going, but obviously once it moved away from Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, it started to feel the, the effects of divergent air associated with that uh, that upper level trough over the southern United States. That created a bit of a vacuum here for the system to really start to kind of get its act together. Low shear, low uh, amounts of dry air, and that uh, enhanced area uh, of upward motion to the north of the system really just allowed the system to, to get its act together. And it went, like I said, uh, within two and a half days from a disturbance to a Cat 4 hurricane. So nothing to be sniffed at by any stretch. You can see here that um, we have got uh, a fairly small, because we've got a strong block over Greenland at the moment here, the jet is forced quite far to the south. What we've actually got is quite a small area here of high pressure uh, between the Azores and the Canaries at the moment. On the northern side, we've got the westerly flow here, allowing uh, uh, Hurricane Isaac to move in an easterly direction here. We've got a high just to the south of, uh, of Greenland, got that high between the Azores and uh, the Canaries, uh, creating this kind of eastward motion here. But essentially the jet stream is, is pretty far to the south. So it's actually not that far uh, to the north of Isaac. And what's going to happen is these two features here kind of run in a kind of easterly direction. We've got the, the system just ahead of it. That moves into the southern UK. It looks as if uh, Isaac itself kind of then gets thrown up into the far north Atlantic here. Because that high to the north slides of the east, it kind of shuts the door to anything going towards the British Isles. According to this run of the GFS ensemble anyway, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it doesn't look in this initial run as if Isaac is going to make a beeline towards the UK. There's nothing obvious at this moment in time, but that may change and something worth keeping an eye on as you start to see heat getting released from the tropics up into the temperate regions. Depends how much the jet is affected by this input of warmth from Isaac as it engages with the, the uh, mid-level westerlies here. Looking at the tropical storm Joyce, you can see here that essentially as we play through this loop, it kind of essentially disappears. It falls apart over the central 
tropical Atlantic here, according to the GFS Ensemble anyway. And there's nothing really, uh, you know, that you can see that's obvious at the moment developing here. We do have these uh, low-end uh, threats over the next uh, seven days or so of development, but they, they're, they're just that low-end and therefore nothing imminent. And obviously, when you factor in the fact that the MJO is expected to go back towards the Americas, the sinking, the uh, suppressed uh, side of the, the, the MJO, um, I should say, once that starts to enter the Americas and into the Atlantic Basin, uh, the overall large scale uh, favorability starts to really drop off. So we'll keep an eye on the tropics going forward here. Certainly the interest in Isaac and the system just ahead of it to the east northeast. We'll need to keep an eye on that from UK and Europe interests and also how that may engage with the, the mid-level westerlies, uh, you know, and how that interrupts or affects the, the ridge trough pattern across the open North Atlantic. We'll, we'll keep our eyes closely fixed on that. Be sure to, um, to be aware that we have got the uh, Global Weather and Climate Report live stream 7.30 p.m. tomorrow evening. It would be great to see you, and uh, it would also be great... To have your subscription if you haven't already hit that the uh, big red button please do so if you're a lover of all things weather leave a comment and also hit that like button as well it's much appreciated and by the way the channel has just recently hit two two thousand views in its history so a massive thank you to everybody for your support over the years but also in recent times as well so stay tuned and i'll see you all being well at 7 30 tomorrow for the live stream enjoy the rest of your saturday bye for now